So in this video, you're going to get some stretching for the, the tight hips and tight hamstrings that you'll use during running, uh, stretching for the side of the hip, and some core strength and some challenges. This is intermediate, maybe slightly advanced with some of the moves. Um, so great if you've got core strength. Just please make sure you use Pilates. So when I say Pilates, the main thing I want you to do is make sure you use the muscles of the tummy and not the back. So for nearly every move, you're going to be imprinting the spine. That means the spine's going to be pushing backwards through the rib cage, pushing downwards. So you mustn't leave the, let the back leave the floor at all. Otherwise, you're not doing Pilates. You need to just quit. So imprint the spine, push the ribs down. Let's start with activating the bum. That's going to stop your back getting tight and doing all the work. Or well, that's one of the things that's going to stop your back getting tight. So feet are hip width apart. I want you to tilt your pelvis so that your tailbone's off the floor, your hip bones are pushing down, your pubic bone and your tailbone are really scooping up. Now I need you to keep that level of pelvic tilt. I want you to lift one vertebra at a time until the weight's in the shoulder blades, not the neck. And I want you to take pause here. Push your ribcage down into your tummy, watch. Do not arch your back so that your back's contracting and doing the work. Rib cage is down, squeeze your bottom lots and tilt the pelvis. Okay, so if this is too strong, you need to go down to the previous video. Thighs are parallel, not here, this is too easy. Thighs are parallel. Now, this leg that's lifted, here's the technical bit. Your ribs are down, your tailbone's up. I'm going to lift this hip one inch. Okay, and then you're going to tilt your pelvis and you're going to squeeze your bottom three, four, Squeeze your bottom, three, four. Breathe in, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. Now bring the focus to your feet. That foot that's on the floor, you need to be making sure your heel is on the floor and your big toe's pushing against the floor and your little toe. So there's a little triangle of weight. Let's do two more breaths. Squeeze, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. Well, there should be more in the bottom than the hamstring. Lower the leg down, change size. If you're finding it's going into hamstring, you need to work on more pelvic tilt. So you might have to just lower your bottom a lot closer to the floor. So you've maybe only got your bottom about an inch off the floor. Okay, this leg foot can be um, in dorsiflexion if you want. Tilt the pelvis as much as you can. Keep the ribs down. What was that other... Up, um, up, change that we made. It was this hip, wasn't it? So the straight leg, that hip lifts just a little bit more, kneecap to ceiling. So you feel that extra work as you try and have both hips parallel. Now you can make it more fun, you can put a glass of wine or something on each hip and check that they're level. A bit like a, a spirit level, but a bit more motivating. So we're aiming for about eight breaths here. So I'm going to go for one more breath here, take me to roughly about eight breaths. Definitely getting a workout and the glute is activated. Foot down, tilt the pelvis, land your ribcage down before your hips. If you need to have pause and have a knee hug, take a knee hug. We're going to work the lower abs now. So this is one of the moves where often, unless I'm coaching someone on a one-to-one, -one, their back starts to leave the floor. So if you're new to Pilates, Please imprint your spine, push your ribs down. Do not let the arch of your back leave the floor. So bring your knees in over chest. You should be able to start at this position here in tabletop without your back arching the floor. If you can't, this video is a little bit too advanced for you. I want to extend one leg out, extend the other leg halfway out, or all the way out if your back's not leaving the floor. First leg in, in. Out, out, in, in. Feeling advanced, extend out and bring it in. If your back's coming off the floor, you're using the muscles of the back. So here's some things you can try. You might extend your legs out a little higher and come back to tabletop. Or you might go to the previous video. So my knees are stopping over hips. Advanced people, 
you're going to lower your feet just off the floor and as if you're sliding out on a pair of roller skates, extend and bring back in. Did you keep your back flat to floor? Breathe out, extend. Breathe in, draw it all the way back in. So basically, the closer the feet are to the floor as you stretch your legs out, the tougher it is on your core. Your challenge is to build up to 16. So we've done about 12 together already. You want to try and do 16 at your maximum level. Double leg extension, if you can. So I'll go for one more. We're going straight into scissors. So here, extend one leg, lift the chest, extend the other leg. Let's add a pulse, so pause here, pull your toes towards you, four, and change. Two, three, four. Brace your core. Remember to engage your pelvic floor. Want to work a little harder? Both legs are straight. Try and remember to kick into your heel. And if you really want to go for it with the upper abs as well, you're lifting as many vertebrae off the floor as you can and keep them as lifted as you can. So this isn't a kick. I'm pulling my leg towards me. I'm assisting with my ham. And it's about getting the hamstring stretch. Let's do four more breaths. You can always build up to 16 breaths for this move as well if you want to. Two more breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. Trying to keep as much height in my upper body as I can. Trying to move my top leg. My bottom leg's automatically moving a bit. Okay, come over into a side plank. So bend your knees. We're going to stretch and strengthen the hips. You can do this lying on the floor. It's in the uh, less advanced video. Look after your shoulder first of all. So you need to not collapse on your shoulder. Elbow directly under shoulder. Push the floor as far away as you can. So there's lots of gap here. Lift your ribs. Push your rib cage down. So we're going to lift our bottom off the floor. And then we're going to try and lift our feet off the floor. It's a bit of a balance challenge here. Okay, ribs down, waist as high as you can. You're going to push your top hip forward and here's the move. Your knee is squeezing to ceiling. Breathe out, two, three, four. Breathe in, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. Breathe in. Really squeeze your bottom and it's your bottom that you're trying to fire up. We're getting a bit of an inner thigh workout. Evidently I'm getting cardio. Breathe in, two, three. Now push the floor as hard as you can with your elbow. Keep the waist lifted. You can always stop early if you need to and build up to your eight reps. I've got two more breaths. Out, two, three, four. Breathe in, two, three, Breathe out. Lower the legs, keep lifted if you can. Hips are up, leg extends, bring your leg forward. Try and push your tailbone back, lift your hips as high as you can. Kick into your heel, toes pull towards you. Breathe in, two, three, four, breathe out, two. I'm trying to get a bit of a hamstring stretch, but you'll probably notice more of a hip workout than anything else. That's the purpose. Waist lifted. Maybe get some good music on. I don't keep you entertained. Two more breaths here for your eight breaths. Waist as high as you can. And two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. Lower down. Want to stretch? Me too. Come on up. Grab your ankles and pull over towards your ankles as far as you can and reset. Don't forget your Pilates, your ribcage is pushing down. Relax your shoulder blade down your back, 
see how far over you can reach. Reset, go again. Breathe out, lift. Relax your shoulders, breathe in, reset. Don't forget, if you suffer with your knees, you're sitting with two straight legs, and the weight should be the same in both sides of your butt cheek if your both legs are out in front. So keep going, this is the option if your knees aren't great. Two straight legs, creating lots of lift through the rib cage. Okay, so you're taking your feet really wide. You need to make sure, especially if your hamstrings are tight, that you're not tucked under with your pelvis. I spoke about this in my last video. So you want to sit right up on your sit bones, on the bony bit of your bum, ideally the front of the sit bones. Great way to do it is just grab the flesh and pull it out the way it helps tilt the pelvis. It's important to look after your back. The other option is you can work with bent knees. You can also sit on a cushion or a pile of books. Just pop them under your bum. And as soon as you're a bit more elevated, it takes all the strain out the back. There should be no strain in the back with this. So, on the front of the sit bones, any way you like. Check this isn't going into shoulders, so wriggle the shoulders down the back. I want you to turn your chest as far one way as you can. Reach down the outside edge of your leg. Lift your other arm as high as you can to help you tip forward. Lift tall and change size. Get a gap between each vertebrae. Let the blood flow get into the spine. And now stretch the back and hamstring. Breathe in, lift, turn. Breathe out. And tip. Breathe in. Breathe out. Engage your pelvic floor. How much lift can you get? Remember, the main purpose is to stretch the back of the body and the hamstrings to get blood flow to the spine. Two more. Turn as far as you can. Lift the back arm as high as you can. Turn as far as you can. If you find this really beneficial, keep going. Go for eight more breaths. However, when you're ready to move on, we're coming into the sequence again. So let's start with clam. You're on your side plank position, elbow directly under shoulder, not in front, it's putting a pressure on your ligaments. Look after your ligaments again. Rather than collapse, push away. Lift the waist, ribs down. Lifting the bum, feeling brave, lift the feet as well. Ooh, that's tough on this side. Tuck your pelvis under, so I'm pulling hip bones back, tucking the pubic bone and tailbone forward. Getting my neck comfortable, chin retracts, arm up. Knee pushes up, breathe in, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four, breathe in, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four. We've got six breaths here, so just keep pushing your knee up to the ceiling. It's like a press. I don't know about you, but my lower foot's collapsing to floor, finding it really strong. So I've got two more breaths. I'll keep going seeing I'm on camera. Breathe in, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four. Breathe in, two, three. How are you doing that lower leg? Mine wants to collapse. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, come on up. Kick the leg forward, lift the waist as high as you can, push into your heel, kick forward. Two, three, four. Get my elbow directly under my shoulder. Breathe out, two, hip work. Don't worry, we'll be stretching soon. Waist as high as you can. Push the floor as hard as you can with your elbow. And push your tailbone back. Lower down. Let's take a stretch. Grab onto your um, ankle. Oh, that one keeps on giving. You still feel it, shake it out if you need to. Take a little bit of stretch over and release. Relax your shoulders. Try and create the lift from this rib cage here and this rib lifts up and over the hip bone. So we've got lots of room in the spine. We never know what's going on with the body. So if you can just create lots of room in the spine, just means 
But if compression of the spine is something that's not great for you, it's not great for anyone, but particularly if you've got osteopenia, something like that, you often don't know you have. So we're just gonna look after the spine here. One more. Anyone else get cardio or is it just me? Come on out of it. Okay, side sequence done. So now we need to work with hovers. Pilates hovers. We're going to try and advance this. Now, just watch what's going on with my feet. You do not get to tuck under like a normal hover because that's too easy. So elbows are under um, and there's an option. For some of you, this is gonna to be too strong for the ankle joint. Elbows are directly under shoulders. Pull the shoulder blades down the back. And as with always, we create a crunch. So I'm pushing my ribs down into belly, lifting my belly as high as I can. And I'm trying to push against my elbows and feet. So I'm gonna breathe out, pike up. Breathe in, push the chest forward. Breathe out, pike up. Breathe in, push the chest forward. Breathe out, pike up. Breathe in, push the chest forward. Keep going. Here's the option for if you're struggling with your ankles. So I'm gonna put the cushion right under the ankle, because not everyone's got the flexibility in the foot to be able to do this. So I've got my cushion right under the ankle joint, and now suddenly it moves a little easier as well, but I'm taking all the pressure out of the foot. Shoulder blades down the back, breathe out, pike up. Breathe in, push the chest forward. All the time, especially now as I lower, I've still got my rib cage pushing into belly. I've still got this imprint to the spine. Breathe out, pike up. Breathe in, lower down. So we're aiming for 12 to 16. How many have you done? I've done about eight. Keep your tailbone tucked down. And we always work at the speed of our own breath. So let's finish this off together. Let's go for the full 16. Remember, if you can work without the pillow, work without the pillow and improve ankle strength. Breathe out, pike up. Breathe in, come forward. Breathe out, pike up. And two more. Reset. If it feels good, Take your knees wide, sit back in child's pose, or your toes into a ball. That sh none of the moves that we've done should have gone into back. If any of the moves have gone into back, you maybe need to go down a level, or just practice your pelvic tilt. 